Metro Prime Remastered is finally out for me in Australia. And now that I got my grimy paws on one of these bad boys, I thought what better way to appreciate this game by comparing the game case to the original Metro Prime game case that was released back in 2002 on the GameCube. This is a comparison of the physical game case and it is not a comparison of the game itself. To determine the winner, we will be looking into 5 areas to see who collects the most points and thus who will be the winner. The 5 areas we will be looking into are the portability, the durability, extra contents provided, the game inside the case, and finally the game case itself, which is easily the magnum opus. As said, the one who racks up the most points will be declared the victor. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Round 1 the Portability Looking at the GameCube case first, it measures to 188mm tall, 137mm wide, and 17mm thick. For the American viewers, that's 7.4 inches tall, 5.4 inches wide, and 0.6 inch thick. It can fit comfortably in any bag that you can carry, but in terms of fitting into your pants pocket, it might be a bit of a struggle. Comparing to the Switch game case, the Switch game case is at 160mm tall, 105mm wide, and finally 10mm thick. When converted into the Imperial system, we come out with 6.6 .6 inches tall, 4.1 inches wide, and 0.4 inches thick. Just being a bit thinner, which allows the Switch game case to fit easier into your pocket, but it's not exactly great either. So instead, let's look at the game disc or the cartridge itself. The Switch game comes in a unique small cartridge, one that is not produced elsewhere, so you need to buy a game carry case specifically for Switch games if you want them to fit snugly. But due to the small compact size of these things, and the inherent nature of these small cartridges, as long as you're not playing Morocco with them, they should be relatively safe to move around. The GameCube discs cannot be said the same, unfortunately. We all know how flimsy discs are. You need to treat the backside of the disc delicately as if it's a newborn baby. A single scratch may render the game to be unplayable at all, so if you carry the game around, you better take the game case with you or buy a dedicated disc carrier for it. But who even have disc sleeve folders anymore? But for the sake of argument that you have one of these that lets you carry multiple, you're still going to have to make sure that it don't slip out due to the GameCube discs being smaller in size. So now you gotta buy another folder just to have them fit snugly. While both are required to have their own game carriers, the Switch game case and game card are simply easier to move around due to the smaller, more compact size of the Switch games. So this round, it goes to Metro Prime Remastered. Round 2! Durability of the game case. The game case itself is more often than not considered the most important part of any collector. We don't look inside the game itself to assess how many scratches, wear and tears the game cartridge or disc have. We look at the game box to see if it's pristine. They say never to judge a book by its cover, but the rules doesn't apply to the game case, so the durability matters a lot. The GameCube case is made of a thick durable plastic that is sturdy on the edge and on the inside. The Switch game case is made of an even tougher plastic from what I can feel. I'm no plastic expert, for all I know, it could be cheaper plastic. But from what I can feel, the Switch game case is definitely more tough. So this means Switch game case is superior then. No. I've seen these cases before. One single drop on a hard surface will usually cause a piece to break off. While the Switch game case feels sturdier, it's also its downfall, causing it to be more brittle. The GameCube cases can be ran over by a car and still be in one piece. Okay, maybe not that extreme, but it's certainly more robust. So while the Switch game cases aesthetically look better and feels better to carry, the durability isn't as good since it's easier to cause damage on it. This round goes to the original Metro Prime. Round three. Any extra content provided. The Switch game case is empty, there's nothing more. Well it does have clips to put a manual, but there's no manual. So... Going to better news, Metro Prime the original contains a safety manual and an instruction booklet. The booklet contains information on how to play the game and even includes some lore here and there. Inside the game case, there's even a slot for you to put a memory card in it, just in case you have a dedicated memory card just for Metro Prime. How cute. It is without a single doubt that the original version is far superior. So the point goes to Metro Prime, the original. Round 4 Looking at the game inside. The Switch game cartridge is certainly small, but if you look at the image, 
It is the starting screen of Metro Prime, where it's an image of the Phazons in orange color, and it looks cool. Too bad there is some foreign language on my game card, and therefore I need to dock some points for putting those words on my English copy of the game. If it wasn't for that, I think this would have looked amazing. The GameCube version, however, is a small circle disc littered with more junk, and half of the bottom has been taken out with just plain blackness, so I gotta dock points for that as well. But Hold it! look at the image on the disc. The image on the disc is Samus in the Morph Ball because it's perfectly circle, much like the disc. It's brilliant, even though it doesn't really convey the game much. Just for the novelty alone, I must say this is the clear winner for this. The point goes to Metro Prime. Round five. On the final round, time to compare the meat and potatoes of the physical copy of the game. The box art. At first glance, both art looks the same. Samus in the same pose, staring off into the distance, while she stands in a hallway. But of course, Prime Remastered, being a remastered version, has everything in high resolution. But the original is still holding up really well. The major difference between the two is the color. The Switch version looks a bit more dreary. The color is weak, everything looks toned down, which makes it more boring and depressing to look at. The original Prime, however, has strong vibrant colors, granted too much orange color, as the hallway is almost as bright orange as her Varia suit. But looking at the brightness makes me think this is an adventure, not a survival horror. And so for that, the Metro Prime, the original, would have to win this round too. That is... If Metro Prime Remastered can't be flipped. When flipped, which I'm not going to because I don't want to cause wears and tears on my copy, Samus is now in a more dynamic pose with some effects looking like as if she is trying to scan something while on the move. We see a planet behind her, which is likely to be Talon 4, the planet featured in the game, which is a great reference to the game. But what takes the cake is that this cover is similar to the Japanese version of the original Metro Prime. So you're not getting one cover art, but two, and they are based on the global art or the Japanese art. You can't beat that no matter how good the original look. The callback is just too good. And so for a final round, goes to Metro Prime Remastered. And that's it for all 5 rounds. The Switch came out with a clutch victory for round 5. But unfortunately, Prime already won this match in round 4. Congratulations! It was tough deciding which one is better. But the original emerged victorious in all of this. Truly a classic. So, do you agree with my points? Or do you think that there's something that I got wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. And with all this over, now I'm gonna go play the game, so I won't exist for the next few days. Bye for now.